postcard weather here in San Francisco. It's a Memorial Day matinee for Chicago Cubs baseball on WGN Sports. Today, the Cubs and the Giants open up a three-game set, and we welcome Cub fans from all over the country watching on WGN America, America's home for baseball. Hope your holiday weekend is going well. Along with Jim Deshays, I'm Len Casper. The Cubs are 2-2 two and two on this three-city road trip. Those games played in San Diego, but now they get the team with the best record in all of baseball. Yeah, Giants doing it a lot of different ways. They're very good here in their home ballpark. They've been really good on the road. 32-18 and 18 now, the best mark in Major League Baseball. They're a third-best start through 50 games since 1958. Middle of the pack in terms of batting average, but they hit a lot of home runs. Second most in the National League with two outs and runners in scoring position. Position, hitting at a 281 clip. That's the best in the NL. The starters have been really good, especially of late last eight ball games. Their starters have an ERA at two. Matt Kane will not start today for the Giants. We'll talk about their replacement in a second. But Jeff Samarja, the story is the same. He still can't get a win, even though he leads the world in earned run average. Yeah, 10 starts this season. 0-4 despite a major league best 146 ERA. The Cubs have scored a grand total of 20 runs in his 10 starts. So, he, again, he's not winning games, but he is making history. Yusmero Petit is in for Kane. He has not pitched well in a starting role, but he's been good here. At home. Yeah, and flashes at times in his career as a starter where he's been solid so far this year. Three emergency starts, one good one, two very poor outings. All right, day game today, night game tomorrow, and then a matinee on Wednesday before the Cubs head off to Milwaukee. It's Memorial Day here in San Francisco. My home in Georgia, headed for the Frisco Bay. I've had nothing to Brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. Ford, manufacturers of America's best-selling brand. Check out our best-selling lineup at your local Ford store or online at localfordstores.com. And by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. And Chicago Cubs baseball in beautiful high definition on WGN TV is brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Now the Cubs lineup brought to you by Mazda and the 2014 Mazda 3 with seamless connectivity. Bonifacio, Lake, and Rizzo will start things. If anybody reaches, we'll see Castro, maybe Valbuena in the first. Castillo, the catcher, former Giant. Nate Schurholtz got a nice hand when 
His name was announced in the Cub lineup. Darwin Barney is at second, and the pitcher, Jeff Samarja, hits ninth. Defensively this afternoon, the Giants with an outfield of Morse, Pagan, and Pence. Michael Morse, a bit of a liability out there in left. If they have a lead late, he will probably be removed from the game. Sandoval Crawford on the left side of the infield. Crawford, very, very good at short. Hicks playing second base. Buster Posey making his seventh start of the year down there at first base. That means Hector Sanchez, the backup catcher, gets that assignment this afternoon. He's behind the dish for Yusmero Petit, 3 and 1, 476 ERA. As we mentioned in the open, he's made three starts uh, due to injuries from their regular rotation. He's also worked 10 times out of the bullpen. He's 3 and 1 with a 476 ERA. There's the breakdown. Whips, OPS against. Strikeout rate better than major league average, and his walk rate is uh, below. So those numbers good for Petita. Finesse right hander, fastball top out in the high 80s. Curve slider and change. He's in for Matt Kane. Scratched from today's start due to a sprained hamstring, and we're underway. Strike one on Bonifacio. You see both teams and all teams today wearing specially designed caps and jerseys. That's authentic military digital camouflage licensed from the United States Marine Corps in honor of Memorial Day. That ball smacked into center, and it'll drop down in front of Angel Pagan, and the Cubs have the leadoff man aboard. Now Bonifacio has been struggling a bit lately, especially from the left side of the plate. Took an 0 for yesterday. A good start for him. Always a threat to run. He's stolen 11 bases, been caught three times. Now Junior Lake hit a home run yesterday. He's batting 340 over his last dozen contests. The Cubs were swept here in a four-game series two years ago, and they returned the favor in a three-game set last season. And Bonifacio takes off. The throw is going to beat him wow. by a pretty wide margin, in fact. Hector Sanchez nails him. Well, Hector Sanchez coming into this ball game had thrown out 33 percent, which is uh, a good deal better than league average. And he gets Bonifacio throws a laser beam down there to second base. Catch and tag and out number one recorded by the Giants. Mark Wegner gets the plate. Andy Fletcher, Chris Siegel, Mike Muchlinski on the bases. Swing and a miss. Cubs drew first blood yesterday when Ian Kennedy hung a curveball up and into Junior Lake, and he just cleared that wall and left. Number six for Junior. He wasn't sure whether it was out or not. A lot of confusion. Ground ball backhanded by Sandoval. Two down. That'll bring up Anthony Rizzo. An ironic surname for you, Smero Petit. He's anything but he. Was listed at 6'1, 250. 29 years old. And he's had to make several emergency starts. His last one was May 16th. Tim Hudson had a left hip strain. Filled in for Matt Kane earlier this year as well. And better as a reliever than as a starter. And as we showed you in the open, stellar numbers here at home versus on the road. 2 0 the count. And not being a power guy, he has to locate and use both sides of the plate with his fastball. Two and one with a 579 ERA and four starts against the Cubs that taking place between 07 and 09. That's a good crisp one there down around the knees. From Maracaibo in Venezuela. Two and two. 
Well, the Giants shift for Rizzo not as much as the Padres and some other clubs. They keep their shortstop Crawford on the third base side of the bag there. And the second baseman Hicks shifts out into that rover position in shallow right. Rizzo chased one and Petit who gave up that leadoff single. Anthony saying he got a piece of that ball. Wait a minute. Stop the band. Here comes Rick Renteria. He wants a word with. Starting lineup written out by Bruce Bochy, former Cub Angel Pagan switch hitter, has been terrific this year. Hunter Pence is in right. Buster Posey playing first base today. Pablo Sandoval over third. Michael Morris, big day yesterday against the Twins. Three doubles, and he knocked in four. Sanchez catches. Crawford and Hicks make up their double play tandem with Petit, the pitcher. To the outfield we go and we'll find Junior Lake, Emilio Bonifacio, and Nate Sherholtz left center and right. Nate playing all those games here in his time with the Giants. Certainly familiar with the outfield. Balbuena, Castro, Barney, Rizzo, third to first. Castillo behind the plate. Jeff Samarja ready to unleash pitch number one here. And a running fastball is up and away. Um, Pagan, there you see the numbers. It's not a misprint, unfortunately. He is 0-4 with the best earned run average. Among all qualifying pitchers in baseball, the ground ball, diving stop, Rizzo, Samarja couldn't handle the throw, and Pagan is aboard. Well, it's a, a kind of a running theme. The uh, Rizzo to Samarja at first base with Jeff's on the mound. He gets a lot of ground balls to the right side of the infield. And this time they're not able to get the play on Pagan. It looked like they were going to beat Pagan. Rizzo leaves his feet, quickly gets up. And Jeff just dropped it. He was looking away, looking trying to find the base. Yeah, looking to find the bag. And just clanked it. It should be an error on Jeff. Did I hear E3? If it is, they'll fix it. Yeah, that'll be E1. So now Hunter Pence. Who takes a strike. He has played every game. He's played every inning this year. And he is on fire. 444 over the last week, 408 the last two weeks. That is an error on uh, Jeff, by the way. Broken bat bouncer to Castro, and he'll get the out at first with Pagan now. That's second. Yeah, good decision there by Castro. He had no play at second base. Let's look a little deeper into the numbers on Jeff Samarja. His strikeout rate is down 
of this year. He's right at Major League average, but was better than that last year, and that's by design. Pitching more to contact, throwing more two-seam fastballs. League average whip for a starting pitcher is just a shade under 1.3, so he's way better than that. Same for that on-base plus slugging, significantly better than league average. So fewer strikeouts, more ground ball outs. He's only allowed two home runs this year. Buster Posey fouls off. Just two for his last 24. In terms of position player health, the Giants have been without Marco Scudero with back issues since the season started. And now Brandon Belt has a broken thumb, so the right side of their infield. So Posey at first today with Sanchez catching. And Posey uh, recently uh, dealt with uh, some nerve irritation in his lower back. And when you see two out of 24, it makes you wonder if he's less than 100%. A little bit of that Paul Goldschmidt bat barrel pointing down as he gets ready to hit one and two. Well the other thing that makes you wonder too if that back is still bugging him some the fact that he's not catching today typically does not catch Tim Lincecum. Who we, we will see on Wednesday so there's a good chance he you know, doesn't catch two out of the three games in this series. The kick and the one two and he struck him out. Power to fastball right by him. Yeah, well, trying to go down and away, he misses a spot by a couple of feet. But when you throw 95, you can get away with it. See where the target is set and where the pitch ends up. We'll get into it a little more as we move along, but a great fan graphs piece a few days ago on some changes Samarja has made in terms of pitch selection with two strikes. Uh, his position on the rubber. And what his split finger pitch is doing this year, as opposed to uh, last year, as Pablo Sandoval does what he does best swing the bat 96 and he came up empty. So, margin is 200th career appearance. Well, that fastball is jumping out of his hand pretty good here this afternoon. That one at 96. Some guys, it takes him an inning or two to get up to speed, so to speak, but typically with Samarja, that's not the case. Comes out of that bullpen firing bullets. Fouled out of play. Sandoval here in an RBI spot, and he's working on a five game RBI streak. Yeah, much better of late after a slow start for the Panda. We're gone at second. Two down here in the first, and the 0 2. Nearly hit him. He's doing the panda dance. That is a very rare, very obscure movie reference. And if you care to know it, you can look it up. It's really not that I am not movie. aware of it. No, I don't remember the movie. It's some kid's movie my kids watched. I think Vin Diesel was in it. <laughs> I did not see it for sure. <laughs> With all due respect. Fouled off, still one and two. Big lively crowd here today. That's been the norm here. They sell out all the time. 271 consecutive sellouts here at AT&T. This will be number 272, the longest active streak in baseball. Well, this would be a good time to bury that splitter down. Nope. Heat her up. So we can get into it here a bit. Uh, Jeff Sullivan's piece uh, four days ago. You can find it on Fangraphs.com. Uh, Samarja is sticking more with his fastball and two strike counts, which would at least partially explain the strikeout rate going down. Getting more arm side run on his splitter as well, as opposed to more downward movement. Where was that? Looked like a cutter. Yeah, a little backdoor cut piece. Well, he really wanted it. Sandoval has a reputation of swinging at just about anything close. Key holding there, and it was a good call. Pitches off the plate. 
Hit the glove, but the glove was out of the strike zone. Three and two. Mike Morris is on deck. Yeah. And the Giants will grab the lead. It'll be an unearned run as Sandoval with a long single knocks home Pagan. Given nine RBIs over his last six games. Yeah, 354 batting average for Sandoval over the last couple of weeks. So, as I mentioned, a number of these giant hitters really swinging it well, trying to get in there on him with a fastball. He's awfully quick inside. So the error comes back to haunt Samarjan. The Giants draw first blood. Unearned run, but. Still counts. An early run, yeah, and the Giants really good when they get the lead early. Well, Michael Morris pops it foul out of play. The Giants hit home runs. Hit for a high batting average, but only the Rockies have hit more among all National League teams. Yeah, but the addition of Morris is really just. Give them one more power bat in that lineup. It's obviously helped them uh, maintain with Brandon Belt on the disabled list because he was off to a great start. And the fact that Morris can play some first base gave Bruce Bochy some options. So the big guy Belt out of there, and now Morris plays over there at first base. Posey gets some starts there. It's kind of been the, the calling card of the Giants over the, the last three or four years. The, Versatility in the lot of Bruce Bochy not afraid to move guys around. They've got a lot of switch hitters. Get a lot of uh, platoon advantage matchups. The 0-2 check swing foul. In a disappointing season last year after winning the World Series two years ago. Not off to a great start. Through 50 games, the last time the Giants had the best record in baseball was in 1973. There you see those home run yeah. numbers. How about the Marlins? Yeah, and I would say the Giants 59 more impressive than the Rockies 66, given the, the ballparks they play their home games in. Castro will underhand to Barney second. Hunter and Tally as the Giants grab the early lead. It's one to nothing after an inning. Point Institute, but uh, some good news for Justin Ruggiano on that injury report. He is now active. And Ryan Kalish option to AAA Iowa to make room for Ruggiano. Illinois Bone and Joint Institute helping you move better. 
so you could live better. Visit IBJI.com. I wonder if the passengers on that sailboat are just going between here and Oakland to catch the uh, Tigers and the A's today. They started when we did. I think they're probably just having some cold beverages and going for a sail and perhaps listening to uh, John Miller and Dave Fleming. That'd be a pretty good day too. Yeah. One strike on Castro. Two strikes on Starlin. Made it a one run game in the ninth yesterday with a two run homer off Houston Street. Cubs came up a run short to complete a two and two series in San Diego. Petit fooled him with that 0 1 fastball because he was expecting that pitch right there on the 0 1 offering. By the way, uh, thanks to our colleague Steve Lippo from WGN, the uh, Peter Panda dance. Yeah, yeah. From the pacifier. Yeah, that's it. Steve's uh, opinion was uh, Vin Diesel was robbed of an Oscar. So <laughs> you'd be the judge. We'd love to uh, hear from you and uh, maybe see you as well. Oh, yeah, the dead. Len JD at Tribune.com via email, Facebook, Twitter. You can tweet us a selfie at hashtag WGN Cubs. I will survive. Luis Valbuena hitting over 400 his last nine contests. Two and zero. Oh. <laughs> Something we say a yeah. whole lot with Luis he, at the plate. It's funny he has such a discerning eye, but pitchers do pitch him carefully. You know, almost like he were just, a, you know, flat out slugger, because he always gets into these hitters' counts. Two and one. I mean, Luis has got pop. He's not the. You know, the type of hitter that you fear a whole lot. Right now, you have to respect him because he's been swinging a well. After two, always a 412 hitter with an on base percentage that's got to be off the charts. Fly ball to left. This one twisting, and it's going to be caught by Morris in foul territory. There is not a lot of it in this ballpark in the corners. Mets and Marlins in town for the next homestand. The Cubs will celebrate the 1940s. Planned festivities include music, food, and giveaways that mirror the 40s. For more information about the year-long celebration, visit WrigleyField100.com. Tickets are available for every game in that homestand. So hit the website and buy your tickets and come on out. The weather should be nice. Here's Morris, as I mentioned at the outset, not fleet of foot, not a great outfielder, but a good play here. Wellington Castillo looks at a strike. Right field, and this one will land in the seats just off the ledge and into the stands. Petit has made three starts. First one was really good. Six scoreless against the Padres. That's back on uh, April 29th. And then he started against the Pirates on May 5th. That did not go well at all. Allowed eight earned runs and four and a third in that ball game. And then May 16th against Miami, five innings, seven hits, five runs, four earned.
came within an out of a perfect game last that? September against the Diamondbacks. September 6th. Eric Chavez with a single to right spoiled it. Would have been the 24th 27 up 27 down performance in the history of this great game. Well, a year after Matt Kane pitched his here in June against the Astros. You were here to see it. As Castillo strikes out, comes down one nothing after an inning and a half. Lombard Street as we go to break. Instead of becoming one of the first baseball teams to install lights, the Cubs became one of the last. Uh, after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, P.K. Wrigley donated the lighting equipment that he had uh, purchased to the War Department in late 1941. It's brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. Switch hitting catcher Hector Sanchez leading off for the Giants. They lead one nothing. A lot of times the backup catcher is just a catch and throw guy, but but Sanchez can swing it a little bit. He's not a real patient hitter. He doesn't walk much at all, and he strikes out a lot. Got a little pop in that bat. Ooh. Man, that was a good slider there. 0 oh and 2. Stuff wise, he's poised to have another good day. See if the location matches the stuff. We've seen the fastball at 97, and that slider about as good as we've seen from Jeff in terms of the good downward tilt on it. Crawford and Hicks to follow. Sanchez one of three switch hitters in the lineup. There's one on the bench. And who would that be? That would be that Adrianza guy. E. Harin. A. Ray. A. Ray. A. Ray. Adrianza. A. Ray Adrianza. Say that backwards, Harry. Here's a 2 2 pulled foul near the Cubs dugout. Big 
right hander coming back on a 2 2 a swing and a miss when looked like a split for strike three. It's a second strikeout. Mm, mm, slider. slider. Yeah. Yeah. Similar to that earlier one he'd thrown in the at bat. Mm. Now sometimes this slider is a little more lateral. That one's got good depth, getting on top of it a little bit better. Brandon Crawford, the shortstop, taps it foul. OPS up over 780. That would be a career high if he could maintain it by a, a good margin. Known as a plus defender at short. The uh, defensive metrics have him uh, not quite as good this year. Normally very dependable over there at short. And after the high one couldn't get it 0 2. We've talked a lot this year about Jeff and his inclination to pitch the contact a little bit more to try to save some bullets today. It looks like he's feeling a little fresh with that heater and and willing to play the power game a little bit more with elevated fastballs. One and two. The second baseman Hicks will bat next. These guys have combined for 14 home runs already. Crawford with six. Hicks has eight. Nope. Just drifted a little bit on that one, left it up and away. Yeah, and that's the thing is this giant lineup, even without belt, it's a little deeper than that we saw from them last year. Hicks reminiscent of what Mike Olt has done for the Cubs, giving them a power bat down near the bottom of the order, not hitting for average, but for power. Foul to right. Sixty six degrees at game time. A glorious oh holiday God. afternoon. Goodness. Isn't that something? I just want to fire up the grill. So Castillo wants his pitch down, and that was the split at 86. He's got all his tools here this afternoon. Cup fans, if you want to manage the game along with Rick Renteria, log on to WGNTV.com right now and click on the WGN Sports Game Zone banner. All the up to the minute information, stats, all kinds of good stuff there. Game Zone is sponsored by the Great Escape. They have pools, patio sets, play sets, hot tubs, and more. Perfect for Memorial Day. Fouled off by Hicks, who made his big league debut in 2010 with the Atlanta Braves. Brief stint with Oakland two years ago. There's a truck in the water. That was my James Bond music. Sometimes here you see that guy flying around with a jetpack out there, a water propelled jetpack. You see him out in the bay. There's a bunch of kayakers out there. Oof. Slider, strike three. He fans the side. Just sitting on the dock of the bay. One nothing San Francisco. Headed for the Frisco Bay.
Yankees baseball blog at WGNTV.com, sponsored by Jeff Vukovic. Your nationwide insurance agent serving the area for 36 years to join the nation. Contact Jeff at jeffvuk.com. Nationwide is on your side. Former Giant Nate Scherholz. 503 games to begin his major league career. We're in a San Francisco uniform. Parts of six seasons. He's batting seventh today. He's from Northern California. Loves the atmosphere here. But uh, as a left-handed batter, this is not the best ballpark <laughs> for an offensive player. In fact, as you mentioned the other day, the, the National League West parks are all huge. Now you get some help with the altitude in Denver and a little bit of help in uh, Phoenix, but not the California parks so much. That's pulled out of play. No, definitely uh, pitchers parks here, in San Diego and Dodger Stadium. Ball carries a little bit better here, like it does in those other ballparks in the daytime than it does at night. In the baseball world, we tend to compare players and ballparks to other players and ballparks because that's just what we do. I, I think if you haven't been to this spot, the best comp is Wrigley Field. Fans are right on top of the action. You've got a lot going on around it. That ball driven out into deep right center. Pagan going after it, and it is gone. That's his first home run of the year. Well over 400 feet to one of the deepest parts of this cavernous ballpark. One to one. Welcome home, Nate. This is what he needed a little dose of home cooking to finally leave the ballpark. I'm sure plenty of family and friends on hand and he jumped all over that fastball. And we've seen signs is that bats lately squaring up more baseballs had some good swings over the weekend in San Diego. Big part of the yard out there. Straight away centers 399, but it juts out to 421 in right center. Good to see him get rewarded. He's hit some balls pretty well recently. Here's the 0 1 to Barney. A fly to left. And it's Morse. For the first out. So yeah, to, f to finish a conversation, there's not not a ton of parking around here. You know, a pretty small footprint. This part of the city, and it. Uh, yeah, it has some Wrigley feel to it. Mm -hmm. Well, did, didn't they uh, didn't they come and poke around at Wrigley and the environs before they designed this ballpark because of the footprint? It would make sense, yeah. Probably the best view in baseball from where we sit, looking out over the bay. So Marja lifts in the air. Morris will come in to make this play. And they got the best vibe going in baseball right now, too, with all the sellouts, the fact that they've Won a couple World Series in recent years. A lot of energy in the ballpark here. I think originally they wanted to get some some city views, but they did a lot of wind studies, which they really had to do after playing for so long out on Candlestick Point. And I would say, JD, for the most part, the wind doesn't play nearly the factor it did at the old place. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> they got it right yeah, in that regard. Yeah, yeah. 
Crawford in shallow left to end the inning. Former Giant Nate Sherholtz with his first blast of the year, and we're tied at one. Gatherings, family reunions, and bachelor or bachelorette parties. Individual group tickets are available for all games. For more details, go to WrigleyvilleRooftops.com or call 773-248-ROOF. So Marja to Petit, and it's quickly nothing and two. 0 for 8 with five strikeouts so far this year. Three punch outs in a row for Samarja. Pretty good chance he's going to get number four. Little step in the bucket action <laughs> from Petit. He doesn't want anything to do with this at bat. It appears. Don't make a mistake, Jeff. Maybe he's setting him up. Yeah, I wouldn't throw it in her half because that's kind of down the middle for Petit the way he's bailing out. Throw slider. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, you smear. Don't mean to laugh. New in 2014 is the Cubs Authentics Wrigley Field 100 collection from game used throwback jerseys and Wrigley Field 100 baseballs. To autographed items from your favorite alumni and Hall of Famers, Cubs Authentics has the most exclusive memorabilia to commemorate 100 years at Wrigley Field. Visit Cubs.com slash Authentics all season long for updates on the newest game used and autographed items. Well, Samarja, again, we've talked a lot about him pitching the contact this year. He may strike out a bunch today just in spite of his best efforts to pitch the contact because his stuff is that good today. The 97 mile an hour fastball, the slider we've seen so far is as good as I've seen from Samarja in the last two seasons. One and one on Pagan. Kind of generally banged up playing through it. Right knee soreness, sprained left shoulder, you name it. Well, 
will be caught by Bonifacio. Pagan's been a real catalyst for the Giants since 2012. With Pagan, numbers significantly better than without. You can see the runs per game. He's a guy who can make some things happen with his legs. Stolen nine bases this year, been caught a couple of times. It the ball out of the ballpark on occasion. Doubles and triples with his speed. Mm. Wow. Hence his nickname should be Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> he is a ball of energy. And he bounces to third. And he's out. Big controversy here in San Francisco. We'll tell you about that when we come back. And it involves Hunter Pence. by Xfinity. Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. That's Hunter Pence. He likes to ride to the ballpark on his personal scooter, and it has become uh, rather famous here in San Francisco. They actually had a Pence scooter bobblehead day on April 9th, but last night while he was out to dinner downtown, somebody stole the scooter. Henry Shulman, the uh, beat writer for uh, the Giants from the San Francisco Chronicle with a story today about it. Quotes from uh, Pence. Pence called uh, the scooter one of his favorite possessions. He's offering a signed bobblehead that depicts him riding the scooter. If you can locate it. He said uh, he had a dream. He saw somebody riding it last night and he tackled him. <laughs> Fly ball to center off the bat of Junior Lake. Still going back and it's caught by Pagan right up against the green pattern. Well, speaking with the fine gentleman to our right, uh, Mike Kruko and Dwayne Kuyper, who do TV for the Giants, they said the ball has been carrying a little bit better here uh, this year. So uh, Sheerholtz's ball fly out of here and then that ball. Almost did to straightaway center field. Here they are. Two of the best in the business and two of our favorite guys in the world. Always great to see them. 
So he had a dream, though. He had, he had a dream. Made. Yes. Uh, quote: It was. It's one of the favorite, most favorite things I had. There aren't many things I care about: my baseball equipment and my scooter, maybe my computer. I feel it was an extension of me. Wow. I'm not mad at the city. I got a lot of support. Some really funny comments on Twitter. He wrote his backup scooter to the park today. He said it barely got me here. It's really slow. I had to push it with my leg. Oh no. <laughs> Brian Sabian probably stole a scooter. He probably didn't want him to fall off and break his ankle. Found back. Uh, I will tweet a link to the uh, San Francisco Chronicle story about it. If you'd like to read more details. Yeah, that's gonna, there's going to be a big movement here. Bring back Hunter's scooter. Petit with an 0-2. It's low and it's one and two. So uh, first game in San Diego I had a real nice night. Homered and doubled. Did not have a lot of success in the ensuing three games. He's been seeing a lot of breaking stuff down and in from right-handed pitching. Like Yank that. Foul. And he's been hitting a lot of ground balls to the right side of the infield. First time up yesterday in the first inning with two outs, he tried to bunt, fouled it off, ultimately struck out. I think that's just growing frustration hitting into the shift. Foul tip strike three. Four now for Petit, including two in the second. It looked like a change up here at 83 miles an hour, pretty good arm side run. Mets fired their hitting coach Dave Hudgens today and have named Lamar Johnson as their new hitting coach. So I guess about two months in, you start to see hitting well, and pitching yeah, coaches fired. And, and personnel changes with players. You know, a lot of clubs think, well, let's just let our guys play and let them coach till around Memorial Day. Give everybody a chance to prove what they can do. And of course, a lot is dictated by where you are in the standings, too. If you're falling behind significantly, there's a greater sense of urgency. Teams may react more quickly. I don't mean so much with the coaches and demo player moves. That's dropped a 5 3 decision to the Pirates. Well, let's just take a look here, see where the Metropolitans are. Uh, in terms of runs scored, they're ninth in the National League. Just a little below average. Playing a tough hitter's ballpark. Castro pops into right. The scooterless Hunter Pence makes a catch to end the inning. 1-1. One, one. Took my wheels, man.
Shake some action. Let's take a look at the Cubs Ford upcoming schedule. Ford go further in any one of Ford's many fuel efficient vehicles. Check out America's freshest lineup at your local Ford store or at localfordstores.com. Two more here in San Francisco. Off day Thursday, three games in Milwaukee starting Friday night right here on WGN. The Groovies are from San Francisco and they're back together. It's good to hear. I heard they were opening for the Gnarlies. <laughs> or the Posies. There's a base hit out into right center for Buster Posey. And the Giants have a base runner. Their second hit of the day. First one came from Sandoval who knocked in a run and he's coming up. Well, Sandoval's been hot. Posey has not. And that was a good swing of the bat there. Scott Rubin checks in on Twitter. He said they should check with Marco Scudero. On Hunter Pence's missing scooter. Good point. Yeah, missing scooter oh, and the scooter now. Yes, he did. Nose to toes, that's where Pablo likes it. Outside for a ball, and it's one and one. Much better at this point last year for Sandoval, certainly in terms of the batting average. Like I said, last couple of weeks, he's really started to pick it up. Sandoval due to be a free agent after the season. Pitch. Weight always seems to be a topic of conversation out here in San Francisco. What kind of shape he's in? It's always a bigger concern when he's not hitting. You know, when he's hitting and heavy, it was fine. But when he started to scuffle, it became an issue. Appears to be in pretty good shape right now. Pause before a 2 2 pitch. Thump to deep right. And it's gone. It's a two run homer for Sandoval. Not easy to hit a home run in that part of the park and not put it into the cove. But he just got it over that high brick wall and it's three to one. And Sandoval has driven all three of the runs home. Two out single in the first, and the Giants have been unbelievably good. They've scored 46% of their runs with two outs. This comes with nobody out. Watch him use the legs. Yeah. Dropping that back knee to go down and get that slider. Trying to crowd him down and in. Mm -hmm. That's a powerful that's man, man right there. It. Yeah, that's a pretty swing of the bat. Yeah. Smarts are trying to jam him, hoping to get a ground ball double play, and Sandoval able to nullify that plan with a big swing of the bat. He likes to swing the bat. He goes up there looking to swing the bat and watch him collapse that back leg and go down and get this ball. Ninety seventh career home run. The 
Samarja in his 11th start of the year. And we know he hasn't won yet. In fact, he hasn't won over his last 16 starts despite a sub three ERA dating back to August of last year. Two and two on Morse. It has become a, a topic of, of, I would say, stress and tension among the Cub hitters because they, they've, they've pressed to try to get Jeff a win. And that's the last thing you want to have happen. We were talking with Ricky Renteria today. If early runs would be a good thing for Jeff Samarja. Now all of a sudden you're trailing, you get into the middle innings. The last thing you want guys to do is start trying to do too much. You have the mentality that I got it, I must. That doesn't really work in baseball. You need it. More of a relaxed approach, let the game, quote unquote, come to you. I mean, the thought is in the right place. These guys are trying to do what they can to give them a win, but as you say, you got to just let it happen. Swing and a miss, strike three. And that is the first out of the inning. Cup fans, this Thursday, June 5th, is Jersey off our back night at Wrigley Field. Don't miss the action as the Cubs battle the Mets at 6.05. Well, that wouldn't be this Thursday, would it? It would be the following a week from Thursday. From. Yeah, yep. a week from Thursday. Anyway, Mets are in town. 6.05 game, and autograph-worn jerseys will be awarded to lucky fans in random seats after the ball game. That's compliments of Majestic. Bonifacio gets Hector Sanchez. This Thursday, the Cubs are off. There's some cowboy boots in the uh, dugout. What's that all about? Uh, we'll have to find out. The good luck charm, or maybe they represent. Somebody who's missing. And Crawford. He struck out his first time up and swings and misses. Looks like fastballs up. Maybe the game plan for Crawford. He saw a bunch of them in his first at bat. One and one. Strike called, it's one and two. Count is even now, two and two. Getting tweets about lucky cowboy boots. Maybe um, from Madison Bumgarner to uh, to Pablo Sandoval. Not really sure. Well, yeah, I was guessing that Bumgarner had something to do with it. He's the guy that gave his wife a cow for a wedding present. There. A cutter or slider in on the left handed hitters has not been the best weapon for Jeff today. Giants have gotten some good swings at it. Swung on and missed. For Samarja's seventh strikeout, but he trails three to one after Sandoval took him deep.
summary, former Giant Nate Sherholtz connects for the first time this year. And Pablo Sandoval keeps on hitting for the Giants. Start something special. Great leases and low financing on a new Honda. Visit shophonda.com or visit your local Honda dealer. Cup fans here in San Francisco cheering on their team. Well, Buena fouled out to Morris his first time up, leading off the fifth against a fill-in starter, Yusmero Petit. And a strike called. Sandoval playing in to protect against the bunt, even though Valbuena rarely bunts. He also rarely hits the ball on the ground in that direction, so a real loss by playing in there for Sandoval. Better position to cut off a little slow chopper. No one two. John Carlos Stanton hit his 15th home run, leading the National League as Miami beat the Nationals in D.C. three to two today. That almost never happens. Had a lot of success in Washington, at least in the last couple of years. Marlins with the win, improving to seven and 17 away from home. And an 0-2 base hit. Trying to go down and away with a fastball, and it's away, but up a little bit. Whacked into center field for a leadoff single. And by the way, those boots, they are, they're Sandoval's, and I, I believe they were given to him by Bumgarner. Okay. I checked with the boys next door and got it. He gave him the boots, and he got a couple hits, so now they're, they're good luck. So he'll wear them before the game and then set them up there. So you're saying if someone had taken his boots and not Hunter Pence's scooter, this game might still be tied? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Oh, and one on Castile. Here's a pitch. Boy, that ball hit hard and almost hit Petit, who was able to duck out of the way, and the Cubs are in business. Two on with nobody out. A scorcher off the bat of Castillo. Yeah, Petit, just one of those guys. He cannot overpower you in the strike zone, so he's really got to hit his spots, and he's been. Misfiring here in the uh, fifth inning. Uh, Buena took advantage of a fastball up, as does Castillo. Don't know how much Bruce Bochy is going to ask of Petit here today, making this spot start. How about that? A little grill working out there in the kayak. Sherholtz with a long home run in the third inning. Called strike. That pirate win in New York goes to reliever Tony Watson. He's 5 and 0. Oh. Jose Valverde uh, pitched in that game took the loss and was cut from the Mets roster after the game so the hitting coach and one of their relievers get the boot mm. I'll ring your bell. Is going to take a little time to gather himself. Oh, man. Oh. Jarring. Well, we have a second. Let's step aside and see what's coming up on WGN.
Back here at AT&T Park in San Francisco, Lennon J.D. and our WGN Sports crew as they give Hector Sanchez some time here. You know, the thing we're learning about blows to the head in you know, the NFL, obviously uh, Major League Baseball, trying to get rid of home plate collisions. Occasionally guys are going to get hit on foul balls like that behind the plate. You can put a, a helmet on, a mask, all the padding in the world, J.D., but the, the brain still moves inside the skull, right, right. and that's, that's, that's... that's the stuff you, you got to really be concerned about. So we resume in a one two pitch on the ground. They'll try to turn it, but will not. They'll only get one. They're at the corners now. On a fielder's choice by Sherholtz. Well, the old adage is first man sure, second man quick, and I think that's what Hicks was all about out there at second base that time. Wanted to make sure he. Made a good clean feed to second base. He probably could have been a little quicker, but didn't want to make a big mistake. So the Giants don't get their double play. This big, big at bat for Darwin Barney with Samarja on deck. Double play depth up the middle. In at the corners. Giants thinking the Cubs might have a play on, understandably, with the pitcher on deck. Square to butt took a strike. Darwin with a couple of College World Series titles under his belt at Oregon State. And his alma mater, the number one seed in this year's tournament. Oh six oh seven. Barney was a part of those championship clubs. Thrown over to. Keep Nate tight there at first base, but also to see if Darwin Barney tips his hand at all as to whether they would put on any kind of a safety squeeze or suicide squeeze. The pitch. A fly ball to left. Morris will make the grab on the back pedal as Valbuena tags and scores. Darwin Barney just tripped down the steps of the Cubs dugout. Thankfully, he stayed on his feet. That could have been scary. Sack flies 3 2. Yeah, nice job. Trying to get back into this game with the pitcher on deck. Puts a little pressure on the eight hole hitter to get something done. And nice deep fly ball to get one home. And then some drama. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Hang on. Sure holds still at first and it's Samarja. Low and outside ball one. Samarja obviously a tremendous athlete with his football pedigree and what he's done on the baseball diamond while at Notre Dame. He didn't play the field he just pitched that was part of his agreement when he went there. He uh, played center field in high school. Feels like he could have been a really good hitter in college, but that wasn't the deal. They allowed him to pitch, but not to play a position. Right field, Pence. Back on it, he won't get it. Sir Holtz should be able to easily score. 
And Jeff Samarja has tied the game with a double. It's three to three. That ball was scorched. Hunter Pence started drifting after that. I think he really surprised that Samarja was able to drive that ball over his head the other way. It's one thing for a pitcher to pull one over an outfielder's head, but to drive the ball the other way, very rare for a pitcher to have this kind of pop. Fourth career double, ninth career RBI, and a game tired. So they get those two runs right back after the Sandoval homer. Line and the Cubs will grab their first lead. Samarja scores. Bonifacio thinking three. The throw there. Not in time. Sandoval was showing the ball to the third base umpire, Mike Mishlinski. If he had held the tag, he would have gotten Bonifacio, who came off the base. Chris Bochy wants to come out and have a chat about it while his boys review the video. Really not the best of decisions by Bonifacio with two outs to push this to third base. He was able to make it. But obviously already in scoring position at second probably should have dropped anchor there. Hard to tell guys with Bonifacio speed though to, to stop running. He's playing a game of twister. <laughs> right hand <laughs> yellow. Wow close there. And then he comes off the bag a little bit. If had Sandoval stayed on the tag, they might have gotten a call. Dolce's still looking into his dugout. And he will not challenge. And here comes Dave Rigetti to the mound. Cubs with a 4-3 lead. Three two-out runs. Check that. Two two-out runs. The sack fly by Barney. As well. David Huff heating it up in a hurry out there in the pen. Let's take another look at that play at third base. Again, I think not a bad, not a good decision, excuse me, by Bonifacio. And he gets away with it by, wow, he's probably out, right? It looks like that tag got him. Got him on the backside, maybe right before the foot hit the base, but that would have been very difficult to justify challenging because it would have been a tough one to overturn. Well, now that he's there, a little ball in the dirt, Cubs could steal a run. Three runs, four hits in the inning. And ball one on Junior Lake. And he went one and one. In about a half hour, we will have a moment of silence. We will pause uh, at three o'clock local time. A national moment of remembrance. And Major League Baseball has supported that since uh, 1997 with the uh, moment of silence. As we honor those men and women who have died serving in the United States military. It was known as Decoration Day. And it came uh, after the Civil War. Final Monday of the month of May. The pitch. Just off the outside corner, and it's two and two. Taking a shot at that edge and just a little bit off. Got to be a breaking ball here. 
And I would suspect again here. Rizzo next. This will be Petit's last batter, regardless of how it ends up for him. Petit strikes out late, but a lot of damage done. The Cubs have the lead. It's four to three. Market game live in true HD on over 400 devices. Visit Cubs.com for details. In the hole, it's short and a long throw by Castro. Out at first. He gets Brandon Hicks. Well, it was that a pretty play. Man, was that a pretty play. We watched Everett Cabrera down in San Diego over the weekend make a number of outstanding plays. And let's watch Castro go to work here on the backhand side. He doesn't have a lot of time to set his feet. A little off balance throw. On the money to get his man. And this is slick from Starlin Castro. Normally, you'd like to be able to take another half step to plant a little bit better on that back side. So, off balance, able to get enough on the throw. Good stretch by Rizzo. How about this? They're going to let Huff, who will come in to pitch, take this at bat. Well, like the Cubs, the Giants playing with just a four man bench. And two up is one out of six in his career. Yeah, that I, you had a feeling that that at bat was not going to end well, but I have no problem with the play by Bruce Bochy because he is limited with the number of guys on his bench. He's just figuring, well, I'm probably not going to get a lot done no matter who I send up to face Samarja. Pulled off the bench. He, at least he went with a platoon split advantage yeah. right over uh, Petit. He could have let Petit hit. Yeah. Well, Two outs here's yeah, Pagan. Having witnessed Petit's at bat, he probably figured, well.
The other alternative would have been to use one of his starting pitchers. Pagan out of the deep right center. Sherholtz makes a catch right at the warning track. You see 421 to the deepest part of this ballpark. And Samarja. Another boy in this inning. Yeah. Castillo talk about it. Cubs maintain their lead. Cubs. That's Grace Slick, who was born in Evanston, Illinois. That's not Grace Slick that we're listening to. Uh, but obviously, Jefferson Airplane originated here in the Bay Area. You know, Grace Slick's uh, birth name was? Uh, Wing, isn't it? Yes. Good call. Grace Barnett Wing. So, Carlos Santana as well. Huff to Rizzo as we start the sixth. Cubs leading 4-3. Just to follow up on Huff hitting uh, for Petit. I, I wonder, we can ask uh, Boach tomorrow, if uh, he decided after Santiago Casilla ended up on the DL last week. And they told him not to swing, and he strained his hamstring. And he just said, you know what, David, you bat, just just take it easy. Yeah. And did well, not want yeah. to use a starting pitcher and have anybody try to do something foolish. Well, and, and Kane probably would be his best candidate, but he's got the bad hammy. Yep. There's a base hit through the shift for Rizzo. Big turn around first. He'll hold there with a leadoff single. Yeah, and I think if Boach had to do it over again, and what we're talking about is Santiago Casilla, one of his relief pitchers, took in that bat the other day and blew out his hammy going down the first baseline. And he was a setup guy. Yeah. And, and Bruce had told him before the at bat, you don't have to swing. And I think meaning, I hope you don't. And I think next time it'll be, don't swing, or certainly don't sell out going down the line. And he's hurt. Unbelievable. Well, he was flying down the line. Got to stay in your lane in this business yep. sometimes. Backdoor slider or cutter there from Huff. He throws a lot of cutters. Also has a curveball and a change. Not a hard thrower. Fastball a little below major league average, sitting right around 90, 91 miles an hour. 
Spent some time on the DL earlier. In big league time with the Indians. Reference Brandon Puffer uh, the other day. How about uh, Huff and Puffer in the same bullpen? That would be good. Oh, and two. Big leg kick, the pitch, and a bouncer to Sandoval, who will charge, throw, and get Castro. Cubs baseball is brought to you by Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. A lot of boats in the cove and in the bay on this sun splashed Memorial Day afternoon. We hope you're enjoying it with friends and family. Cubs trying to tack on. Runner at second with one out. And the pitch to Valbuena. A dipping liner will be handled by Morse. Let's step aside once again and see what's coming up on WGN. Holiday baseball, it has long been a tradition. Memorial Day, obviously 4th of July, Labor Day. Benchmarks in a baseball season. It used to be doubleheaders back in the day. In on the hands of Castile, who's one out of two on the afternoon. Yeah, hit a rocket to center. Last time up. The pitch. That's a base hit. Here comes Rizzo. He will score. And the Cubs lead by two. It's five to three. Taking a page out of the Giants playbook with a big two out knock. Quiet lower body, good hands, RBI single on a little backdoor slider. Helping out his battery mate, Jeff Samarja, now has a two run advantage. Sherholtz sure fouls. After a lengthy delay, they've resumed playing Atlanta, and the Red Sox have come back from. Pretty good deficit. They were down six to one. They now lead eight to six. Bottom of the seventh in Atlanta. Red Sox trying to avoid their 11th, 11th consecutive loss. Josh Beckett with a no hitter yesterday. Uh, today, Chris Young of the Mariners, five no hit innings against the Angels, five nothing Seattle. As they go to the sixth, we'll keep an eye on that. 0 2 is high. That's what Nate did first time up off Petit. Thigh high fastball out over the heart of the plate. Number one. Huff was a sandwich round pick of the Indians in 06 out of UCLA. Compensation from the Cubs after they signed 
Bob Howry. 2006 draft. The pitch. In the dirt blocked by Sanchez. Yeah, first came to the big leagues in 09 with Cleveland as a starting pitcher, and that's pretty much what he did exclusively his first three years. Lifetime 22 and 27 with an ERA at 526. Sanchez taking a beating back there today. It's the second time it's been off the bat of Sherholtz. Steele runs on the 3 2, and that ball is pulled way foul. Quality hat right there. Left field to base hit. Castile has to stop at second. Boy, the Cubs offense here the last two innings has awakened. Well, Cubs in a good spot here lately in, in terms of the pitching matchups they've had in San Diego due to injuries. They've uh, you know they faced a an emergency starter and Tim Stauffer coming out of the bullpen. And they got Billy Buckner called up from AAA to make the start a couple of days ago. And now here today, Kane can't answer the bell, so Petit gets the start, and they whack him around a little bit and get into the, the middle relief. And really, they've had, you know, favorable pitching matchups for the most part over the last four or five days. That's why it was unfortunate they were only able to split that series in San Diego, looking for their first road series win of the year. Ricky Renteria is telling his boys, hey, keep the pedal to the metal. Don't let up. Left field and a base hit. Castillo coming around third. There was a slight hesitation. He will score. Darwin Barney with his second RBI of the day. It's six to three. We talked about Nate and the improving uh, improved at bats he's had lately and the better results. Same thing for Barney last couple of weeks. Better swings. It brings up Samarja RBI double in the fifth. Chris Young's no hit bid is over. Gave up a one out single in the sixth to Cole Calhoun of the Angels. Now we jinxed another one. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're awful. Whatever we say, the opposite happens all over the game of baseball. I prefer to think that the reason it doesn't happen is because it doesn't happen very often. But. Who knows? By the way, I was told uh, Charlie Steiner said no hitter all day. Yeah, Beckett so did Beckett. It. Yeah. All Cubs at the moment. 6 3.
At weekend games, the remote parking lot is located at 3900 North Rockwell. For details, visit Cubs.com. Bottom of the order getting it done today. Six through nine, everybody has at least one RBI. There's Pence. Way inside, ball one. Samarja's 2-0 delivery, sinker strike. Eight strikeouts for Jeff this afternoon. That ties his season high. He got eight against the Phillies, his second start of the year. That came last year early against the Braves. It had been his second start of the year, and he did it in what? Like Under five four. and a third or four and two thirds or something, something like that. Yeah. A chopper to the shortstop Castro. That's 0 for three and is grounded out every time. Now Posey. Strike one called. Two time All Star, Rookie of the Year in 2010, MVP in 2012. He was a comeback player of the year that year as well the previous season and that nasty broken leg and torn ankle ligaments collision at home plate with Scott Cousins Pretty impressive resume for Buster Posey just 27 years of age. Castro able to knock it down. He's got plenty of time though. Posey running and he gets it. Almost played that like a third baseman and why not? You've got time with the catcher. And today the first baseman but catcher's speed heading down the base pass. Yeah and a sharply hit ground ball too. So you know you can afford a bobble not that you intend to but you can get away with one and still make a play. The heel of the glove up into the chest. Seems to be at his best when he's moving laterally. The O one. Now nothing in two. Well, I would think he's going to take a shot way up with a fastball or maybe try a splitter. Now they're going to go way up. Caught by Bonifacio in a shutdown sixth for Samarja. We go to the seventh. 
It's the Cubs six and the Giants three. As we mentioned, uh, 3 o'clock local time around baseball. There will be a, a brief pause in the action for a national moment of remembrance, and I believe that is what's being discussed right now between Mark Wegner and David Huff. Let's send it to the PA announcer. Major League Baseball and the San Francisco Giants are proud to observe the national moment of remembrance, a nationwide act of unity to honor those who have made the ultimate sacrifice in service to the United States. Please join us now in observing this brief moment of silence. Thank you, everyone. And now please direct your attention to the video board for this special presentation. On this day for one brief moment, hear the silence in the air. Think of those once there beside us. Now So Huff will get a couple of extra warm-up tosses before Bonifacio bats here to start the seventh. Cubs leading six to three. Scored the last five runs in this ball game. Fasio wanted to bunt at that pitch, but took it out of the strike zone for ball one. Right. 
That's a strike. And it's one and one. Cubs AAA affiliate, the Iowa Cubs clobbered Colorado Springs today 12 to 3. Eric Jokish got the win. He went two for three at the plate with a double, a walk, two RBIs, and a run, and went eight and a third innings. The full day's work right it's there. Pretty good day. Javier Baez had three more hits. He's been red hot. Average up to 225. He had two doubles, knocked in three. He hit a grand slam yesterday. He did. Chris Bryant has hit number 14 for Tennessee. Smokies lead Huntsville 3 0 in the bottom of the third. Kane County got two runs in the bottom of the 11th to beat Peoria. Five to four. The pitch. Swing and a miss, strike three. Gives Bruce Bochy three left handers he can call on in that bullpen. I felt and Lopez, the veterans, both really good. All A's across the bay, leading Detroit six to nothing in the sixth inning. Detroit had a rough weekend dropping three or four to Texas as Morris can't quite get there. Junior Lake with a blue pit. Uh, Tiger pitching's knocked around pretty good here the last few days. Still have a big lead in their division. Five and a half up on Kansas City and Minnesota going into today's action. Huff will check on the runner Lake. White Sox beat Cleveland six to two. Connor Gillespie had four hits. Diane Vicieto with a three run homer. Look. It got Lake picked oh, off, nice. but the throw gets away, and he'll head all the way to third. Big break for the Cubs. They had him picked off. An error on the pitcher on the throw. So he's taking a modest lead, gets a very aggressive jump, and in his haste, Huff airmails the throw. That'll force the Giants to bring their infielders in. Outside ball one. All the time in the world had Huff after Lake was committed. Aaron throw allows him to get all the way to third base. What a chance for Rizzo now with just one out. Giants have to pull the infield in. Here it is. And then you see the immediate reaction, the anguish. Driven out of the left center, that'll split the gap. Lake will trot home. 
Rizzo will end up at second with a double. It's seven to three. I think all Anthony needed was a left-handed pitcher in there. He's two for two against the southpaw. And yeah, they pitch him obviously differently than right-handed pitchers do. And he stays inside the ball and goes to the middle more frequently. Goes to the middle of the diamond more often against left-handed pitching. This is a cutter up in the zone. Huff can take some solace knowing that Lake would have scored from first base on this ball anyway. So <laughs> if you're looking for a silver lining for the left-hander, I guess that's it. But a nice swing of the bat by Rizzo, his second hit today. A four-run lead here late. And as the Cubs try to help Jeff Samarja get his first win of the year. He's contributed not only on the mound but at the plate as well. Ball one on Castro. There's sellout here over 42,000 in the seats, but pretty much silent right now with the home team trailing by a bunch. Three and oh. Chopper that's booted by Crawford. Second air of the inning. Crawford trying to make the backhanded play commits his fifth air of the year. Never gets it cleanly and then kicks it away. Long time pitching coach Dave Rigetti. With Pat on the backside. It's George Contos. Play by Valbuena. Jake Arietta against Tim Hudson tomorrow night. Edwin Jackson and Tim Lincecum close out the uh, series on Wednesday afternoon. Arietta coming off an outstanding start last time. Getting that series started in San Diego and Tim Hudson's been really really good so far for the Giants as he comes back to the Bay Area where he had so much success with the A's. He's got a 2 1 3 ERA. A roller that gets through Hicks. Rizzo will score. This has been a really bad defensive inning for the Giants. The Cubs have taken advantage and lead 8 to 3. He whiffed on it, ruled an air. It looked to me like he was positioning himself to be able to turn and make a throw to second base. And in so doing, never even got leather on the baseball, maybe just a touch. That'll be it for Huff. Who may leave in a Huff. <laughs> He's probably not going to fight to stay in this one. It's 8 3 Cubs in the seventh.
GN Cubs fan cam. Billy Joel song, Good Night Saigon, our WGN Cubs fan cam today. George Contos, Chicago area native, product of Northwestern, takes over. And one pitch and two outs. 6 4 3 to end the Cubs seventh. We will keep it here. For God bless America, the Cubs lead 8 to 3. Caps for a performance of God bless America. We invite you all to sing along and wave your flags. And when you do, Bank of America will donate $1 on behalf of each person in attendance to military nonprofits. And now, everyone, please welcome back Staff Sergeant Megan May. God bless America. Land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above from the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam God Three Giants errors in the uh, top of this seventh inning. What would you say the winning percentage of a team that commits three errors in one inning all time is? Pretty bad. Yeah. And uh, Jeff Samarj has been stout again out there on the mound. Six innings of three hit, three run baseball, two earned. He hasn't walked anybody. Matching his season high with eight punch outs. Strike called on Michael Morris. Javier Lopez up in the home bullpen. 
And Samarja deals on an 0-1. Lifted the deep right. Sherholtz back. It's going to be off the bricks. Morris will round second. Digging for third. And he'll have a stand-up triple. Three doubles for Morris yesterday. Boy, what a pickup he has been for the Giants. Brian Sabian pretty shrewd this offseason, getting Morris coming off a rough year and with injury problems and a lack of production last season. But back on the beam this year for Morris, this just speaks to his strength here. He went down and got that ball and lifted it high and deep the other way. Way up off that wall for a leadoff triple. The signing of Morris and Tim Hudson, who we talked about last inning, two big, big pickups for this giant club. You don't think triple when you think Morris, not a speedy guy. Popped up by Sanchez on the first pitch. Morris will go halfway down the line and now will retreat. That's the first out. And they have now taken away the error on Hicks on the Valbuena grounder and given Luis an RBI single in the top of the inning. So only two errors. Okay. Changes my three errors in an inning winning percentage question, but still some plays for sure not made by the Giants. It's very sloppy in the seventh. And what had been a very clean game for them through four, just the solo home run. A bunch of quick innings for Petit. Other than that, the boy, the Cubs put a hurting on him through the fifth, sixth, and seventh. Crawford with one of those errors, and he takes a strike. This is one of those situations where intellectually, as a pitcher, you know, hey, I've got a big lead. I'm not even going to worry about that guy in third. Just get out. But deep down, you're like, I do not want to give up any more runs. Somebody's going to start to toss in the cup bullpen. Left hander Wesley Wright. Three pitches for Samarja. That splitter just drift, drifting off the outside corner. They've been working Crawford up in the strike zone with fastballs much of the day. Up out of the strike zone. Ground ball base hit now eight to four. And Brandon Crawford picks up his 24th RBI of the year. So you see the scenario developing here where Samarja will likely have his worst outing of the year in terms of the numbers, but pick up his first W. I guess that'd be appropriate yeah. in some way. Strike call to Hicks. Back to that power slider at 87. I don't know if they have a hot gun here today because typically Jeff Slider is more in that 84 mile an hour range. But he's tightened it up a little bit. He's thrown a lot of really sharp, quick ones. His 0 2. Ooh, yeah, there's one at 88. Good depth, great pitch. Could have been. Looked like it caught the corner. Hit 
Hicks will grab a new bat. Margin now at 99 pitches, 69 for strikes. Justin Grimm has joined Wesley Wright. Breeze is picked up here. Picks with a lot of holes, but he has power. Swing and a miss, strike three. That was a clinic right there. You cannot pitch a batter any better than Samarja just did. The way he worked the slider down and away, and the fastballs in on the hands. Punched him out, broke his bat. This complete dominance by the big righty. Now, pinch hitter Gregor Blanco. And you see the, the pitch sequence. Sliders down and away, fastballs in on the hands. Fouled off, it's 0 and 2. Nine strikeouts, zero walks. So Marge's ERA has gone up to this point. One of the runs today unearned because of his error in the first inning. For his 10th. 8 4 Cubs.
buds. Ford, manufacturers of America's best-selling brand. Check out our best-selling lineup at your local Ford store or online at localfordstores.com. And by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. Packed house in San Francisco, but it's been about Jeff Samarja and the Cubs today leading 8-4 to four late. Big day for Nate Scherholz against his former club. Got jammed that time by Javier Lopez, and that'll go 3-1. to one. Man, They almost botched that one. Would it be boached? They boached it. <laughs> That's only when he makes a mistake. Oh, Samarja is going to stay in this game. Double digits and strikeouts all of a sudden. Yeah, I suspect they talked about it when it came off the field. How do you feel? You want to go back out there? And Jeff probably said, yeah, let me go. And they'll probably just go hitter by hitter. Has the lefty has been around a good long while now. Broke in with the Rockies in 2003. Typically comes in for just a hitter or two. You know, one of those left-handed specialists. So 18 games, but only eight innings for the Loogie. 36 years old, 6'4", 220. Two and two. They've got good wind out there today. Ground ball picked up by Brandon Hicks and he'll get Barney. Two you sailor. Are you a sailor? Have you ever sailed? Um, I I've been on a sailboat, but I have not technically been in charge. Let's put it that way. I sail. I'm sailing. Dr. Marvin. Samarja, a two bouncer to Sandoval to end the inning. Eight four Cubs in the eighth.
landmarks here in the San Francisco Coit Tower. Completed in 1933. On top of Telegraph Hill. I haven't been uh, up in there. Uh, you can buy tickets and uh, get great views of the city. Built to honor the firefighters, I believe. Yes. Lily Hitchcock Coit. Great city for going on the walking shoes. Not have sore calves by the end of the day. Well, one to about two rather to Angel Pagan. Samard is still throwing hard, 95 on that fastball. Three and zero. Oh. Quickest way to get yourself out of the game is to start missing the zone. There's a coliseum across the bay where the A's have been beating up on the Tigers today, six to nothing in the bottom of the seventh. And a strike three and one. I mentioned earlier, Samarja without a walk today. in the left for a base hit. An impressive turn there by Pagan, but down four would be silly to try to take an extra base there. Put yourself at risk, and indeed it was a batter by batter situation, and Renteria is on his way, and looks like that's going to be it for Samarja, who was really, really good again here this afternoon. So can the bullpen hold him at the final six outs, leading by four? We will find out. Here comes Justin Grimm. Justin one and two of the 3.15 earned run average on for the 24th time. Appearance number 23 came yesterday. And he was really sharp. He hadn't been out there for a few days, but yesterday one, two, three inning with a couple of strikeouts and a nine pitch inning at San Diego. Well, it's a four run lead, but uh, this is a part of the order. I mean, this mm -hmm. this yep. could be really it. Yep. You know, if the Giants are going to come back, they may have to do it here in the eighth. It's one of those innings, one of those situations where the eighth probably a little tougher than the ninth, trying to finish off this ball game. Pence hits the ball on the ground a lot, three times already today. Well, for three since he had his scooter stolen, and then he takes ball one. The good life.
Maybe the scooter's in the back of that boat. Wait a minute. Does Pence have his pant bottoms above his knees? Yeah. Is he, he an NFL receiver? No, it's, uh, he, doesn't, he doesn't like the feel of the pant down below his knees. He feels it restricts him. I don't remember it ever seeing it that high. But no, I think wow. he's morphed into this over time. It's like Megatron. I could see MLB maybe uh, stepping in on that one. You're going to wear shorts. The 1 0 pitch is a strike called. It's 1 and 1. That bullpen's roughly the same size as the Cubs bullpen, but it is the Giant bullpen. That's one two tears. Giant lady, yeah. Grim with a long pause before the pitch. Swing and a miss. One and two. Well, if the giant hitters thought they were going to catch a break stuff wise with Samarja leaving the game, not so much. Grim can light it up too. That one at 94 miles an hour. And Justin is just a matter of harnessing his stuff. And the command is sharp. He's really tough to hit. Slider curveball combination to go along with that mid 90s fastball. Got a lot of upside. Pence strikes out. One away here in the eighth. Pence protecting against the breaking ball there, and then a little emergency hack at the high fastball. Gone takes off. Here's the throw by Castillo. He's safe. It was fairly close. Is Ricky coming out? I think he might. Well, what a quick release by Castillo. Pretty aggressive play here. Gamble by Pagan down four to steal this bag, and it was close. Looked like he got in there ahead of the tag. Barney trying to sell it by throwing the ball around the horn. Wow. It Great has look. Been challenged. I haven't seen anything yet, but that would lead me to believe they could overturn it. Well, interesting play, though, by Pagan to steal that base with the, you know, the thunder of their lineup coming up. Down four. He really gets lucky here. The stolen base numbers against Castillo would lead you to believe he's easy to run on. Um, but you know he's quick and he throws well. It's just been a tough year for him. The pitchers, I don't think, have given him a fair shot. Coming into this ball game, just four caught stealing and 31 attempts for Wellington. A 13% caught stealing rate, well below league average, but you can't convince me and you can't convince scouts that he's not one of the better throwers in the game. By the way, uh, there has been one overturn for roughly every five games so far. And going into the season, they were thinking uh, maybe one out of every six games would be overturned. Ball stands. 
And before we resume, you know, we want to send out our deepest sympathies to Dan Leister and his family on the loss of their daughter, uh, Mira Bell. And our thoughts are with Dan, Emily, and Wilson, and one of our WGN colleagues. And as Buster Posey steps in. 1-0 on him. In the dirt. Two O popped him up. Barney makes a catch. Pagan will tag it head to third, but that's an all important second out. Kept his feet moving, twisting and turning, and he made the catch. Twisting and turning and waiting, hoping somebody would run him off that ball. Tossing and turning, turning. Tossing. Great concentration. Tough, tough sky today. And it's, as I mentioned an inning or two ago, the wind has picked up significantly since the start of the ball game. Sandoval with an RBI single, a two run homer, and a line out to center. Plus for Samarja today. Four runs, three earned so far. He's responsible for Pagan down there in third base. Really kind of unlucky today. About six hits, seven base runners allowed by Jeff, and four have scored. is not a good thing. Not in this spot. Morris on deck. You don't want to be handing them base runners here late. Thought he had a walk. Fans weren't happy, but a good pitch. Especially on 3 0. Empires tend to enlarge the zone a little bit. When push comes to shove, <laughs> Sandoval wants to swing the bat. An impressive swing of the bat back in the fourth inning on a what appeared to be a slider or a cutter trying to go down and in on him. He just wouldn't let him wouldn't let him in there. The three two on the way foul pop up and Valbuena will not have a play. Contact, or Sandoval rather contact guy doesn't strike out all that much doesn't walk much either but he's one of those guys if you're going to try to finish him off looking for a swing and miss you probably got to go you know higher than high wider than wide lower than low just go beyond what you normally think of as a chase pitch because of his contact skills.
Leadoff single by Pagan. He's now at third, but there are two outs. Got them all with a couple of strikeouts. And we get into the ninth. It's Juan Gutierrez on the mound for the Giants. Gutierrez, uh, the right hander, one and one with a 380 ERA. Part of this very good bullpen. He's talking to his hat. All right. Get that all sorted out. That whip is really good, right? 0.94. That's way above average. Their bullpen collectively with a 223 earned run average coming into play today got knocked around a little bit this afternoon. Huff worked an inning in a third and was charged with four runs, three earned. Contos and Lopez, they've been unscathed and now Gutierrez, four pitch pitcher, fastball, curveball, slider change. He can rush it up there in the mid 90s, fastball. Pretty straight curveball, probably his best secondary pitch. It was a quality start for Samarja because of the three earned runs in his seven innings. His ERA went from 146 to 168. He was really good. That slider, especially early on, oh, was yeah. as good as I've seen from him. Three and oh on Bonifacio. That last one might have been a strike, but it's tough to get when you don't catch it. Ball four. Okay. 
Swing and a miss by Lake. Well, Ramirez getting ready in the Cubs bullpen. Looks like he'll get the ninth. Fly ball, center field, Angel Pagan with the grab. Here's Rizzo. So two strikeouts against the right hander Petit. Single RBI double, two runs with the lefty Huff in there. Back to the righty and Gutierrez. Shout out to Robin Klusner watching on WGN America in Iowa today. Chris Wilcox wants to know via Twitter, are we wearing some flowers in our hair? What about you, J.D.? I will before the week's over. I'll draw one. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Now, this is usually when you get into that whole debate, should they try to steal a bag here or not? And normally the not part of the equation is well no you want to leave that hole on the right side for Rizzo to try to pull the ball through but that hole is not there because they're not playing at normal double play depth the second baseman Hicks is playing him strong pull. Well, that hole that would be there if they're playing at double play depth is gone. Well Facio goes diving stop by Hicks and he gets the out at first. Great example there. If they're playing for two, that's a base hit. The Cubs set up shop first and third with one out. Castro the batter with a runner at second. 0 for 4 he got on via the error by Crawford in the seventh. Open stance. And he takes ball one. Red Sox a winner today. 8 to 6 come from behind fashion at that. And their 10 game losing streak is over. They were down five runs at one point. Six to one after the fourth inning. Had they lost, they would have tied a major league record for a losing streak for a defending world champion. The Marlins did it twice in 97 and the Kansas City Royals in 86. Clay Buckholtz walked a career high eight and three plus. I guess it would have been the 98 Marlins, right? Because they were the yes. world champions in 97. That is correct. And what gets away and Bonifacio will make third. Another one. <laughs> pitch was, that pitch was right down the middle. Nice ball and Sanchez does not. Get high marks for his receiving skills. In on the hands, three and zero. Oh.
And ball four. Control has not been an issue, had not been an issue for Gutierrez prior to this appearance. And again, I think Sanchez has cost him a couple of strikes. Congrats to our uh, colleague, Mark Silverman, from the Waddle and Sylvie show on ESPN 1000. Mason Soul Silverman, born over the weekend. Here's Val Buena. Two on, two down in the ninth. Cubs with an eight for advantage. Gutierrez missed again. 1 0. Valbuena. This is the time to sit on a fastball right here and pull out the driver. Let it fly. Right field and it's hooking foul. Across the bay, the A's just shut out Detroit 10 to nothing. The final score. Battle of first place teams. And the A's end their four game losing streak. And they were just swept by Toronto. Ball to Hicks. And we'll go to the last of the night. It's the Cubs eight and the Giants four. Bottom of the ninth inning, Neil Ramirez in a non safe situation with his team leading by four. Mark Brady, our producer, our director, Skip Ellison, Doug Stanton, our associate producer.
Bob Forwald is the executive producer of WGN Sports. Christina Ballas, our studio coordinator, back in Chicago. Great work by our entire crew here in San Francisco. The numbers for the hard throwing Ramirez. Yeah, the numbers for the rookie are outstanding. 084 ERA. What really gets your attention to strikeouts 18 strikeouts in 10 and two thirds innings. So eye popping punch out numbers. That's 45% of the batters he has faced. He has struck out. Major League average right around 20%. Deals where the opposing manager gets the scouting report and the stat sheet before a series, and then oh, what do you know about Ramirez? Well, not a heck of a lot. And they start looking at the numbers, and oh my goodness, this guy's striking everybody out. More fouls. So 42,000 plus here today. 42, 257, 35,067 over in Oakland. It's a lot of baseball fans getting their fill of holiday baseball today here in the Bay Area. Fastball slider curve is what we've seen from Ramirez. Fastball typically 95, 96 miles an hour. Overthrown a little bit. Take a deep breath, slow down. If needed, Hector Rondon will be ready. Renteria would love Ramirez just to make it a drama free night. Three and two. Ramirez came in two days ago in support of Travis Wood after Travis gave up a two run home run to Carlos Quentin to make it a three to two ball game. And a very narrow margin there. And Ramirez came in and punched out two to finish off the eighth. Rondon worked a score scoreless ninth. And Cubs won the ball game three to two. In this ball game for either team going into the ninth inning, Gutierrez with two in the top of the inning, and now Ramirez walks the leadoff man. And it'll bring up Hector Sanchez. There's Rondon just in case. It'd be great if somebody had a reliever named Justin Case. Um. Somebody, there was somebody, a, a player whose last name was Casey, and they named their kid Justin. A long time ago. But yeah. There's a guy down here in front of us in a Cub jersey with the name on the back, and it says, Still Waiting. Did you check, check his uh, ID? <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Still Waiting? Rizzo plays behind the runner at first. And inside ball one. Gotta believe Ramirez has a pretty short leash with Rondon ready. One more base runner, and that might be it for him.
Ground ball to Rizzo. Knocks it down. He will get the out at first. He will absolutely exchange bases for outs at this point. Bases for runs for that matter. Cubs leading by four needing two more outs. A sharply hit. Could have been a double play ball but happy to get one. One on Crawford. Yankees and Cardinals are tied at three in the seventh in St. Louis. Final and ten, Baltimore beat Milwaukee interleague action. 7 6. Two home runs for Jonathan Scope. Nick Hundley with the uh, go ahead RBI single in the 10th. Newly acquired from the Padres. Uncle Charlie just made his first appearance of the afternoon, and Ramirez snaps off a good curveball. Out recorded is just kind of calmed him down here a little bit. He was really overthrowing. You know, he's kind of back to being more under control. Well, a win is a win is a win, but this one uh, feel a little more special because it would be Jeff Samarge's first of the year in his 11th start. And it would be his first in his last 17 regular season outings. Popped him up. And out of play. Over in Seattle, Mariners five, Angels won the final score. Chris Young, six and a third, gave up only one run as he beat Tyler Skaggs. Rizzo again. We'll flip to Ramirez. Two gone. Hicks with a strikeout, a ground out, and another punch out. Morse at third, two outs, ninth inning. Getwell wishes to. Vin Scully, he's got a chest cold. He's going to miss the next two Dodger games. Dodgers. Well, Vinny, are at home. It's a long season. Yep. Johnny Cueto and Hyun Jin Ryu tonight at Dodgers Stadium.
Thought Hicks might take one. Trailing by four, but he swung through it. Speaks to the life on that Ramirez fastball. When he's sitting fastball, two balls and no strikes, and he blows it right by him. To the heart of the plate. Tyler Colvin on deck. Pitcher spot next. Oh, just overpowering him. There's the former Cub. Ramirez with a 2 2. Swing and a miss. Cubs win. Samarja wins. For the first time this season. And the final score today the Cubs 8 and the Giants 4. Team with the best record in the league loses to the team going in with the worst record in the National League. But that's baseball, and the Cubs were better today. Yeah, and they earned it. Samarja was really good. Nate Sherrill hits his first home run of the year. And the Giants were a little sloppy in the field as well. So the Cubs get a Memorial Day win, three and two on the road trip, and we'll be back to San Fran momentarily.